Hi guys, this is Alexandra from Maximum Rock Magazine Romania, and I am super stoked to welcome you to a new edition of our podcast. This time around, our guest is Simon Johansson from Swedish melodic death metal masters Soilwork. Simon recently became the band's full-time guitarist after having played with the guys since 2019. He told us the story of how all of that came to be, gave us some intense inside information on what it's like touring after the pandemic, and shared with us his favorite song off of Eva Giebenhitten, Soilwork's most recent record. Check the full interview out, and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us make more content like this. Thank you all for your support, and rock on! So, Simon, hi. So nice to have you here with us. Yeah, thank you. Nice to uh, talk to you. Uh, congratulations on, on becoming a permanent member of Soy Work. You're the full-time guitarist now, and I'm sure you're the perfect fit. Um, yeah, I hope so. So, when did you receive the news, and how did you take it? Were you stoked? Was it awesome? I saw, it was awesome. I mean, I've been I've been uh, been the session guitarist since like 2019. So I did kind of like most of the shows on the Berkeley tour cycle. I didn't do Australia and Japan, and I didn't do like a short run in Finland. But besides that, I did all of the shows. So I mean, I've been in the band uh, kind of like uh, for four years or something already. But uh, then we talked last year. Um, already kind of like in the summer or something we started to talk about it because there were some issues with David uh, or not about his health problem and everything so they kind of like started to to kind of like hint about maybe it, it will be like a permanent spot already back then uh, and then it got decided in November uh, when they said that we, sh we we want you to join because of the unfortunate and very sad fact that David passed away uh, in um, September. And uh, of course, that was a big shock for all of us, uh, including me, because he was a good friend to me as well. So, uh, so at first it, it had to take some time to process that. That thing, of course, uh, because uh, I mean, it's it's a huge thing when someone so close to you passes away. So it was a really turmoil thing in the band, but everyone was kind of like uh, really up to, of course, continue solo work. It, it was never kind of like uh, any talk about disbanding the band or kind of like put it to rest or something. Uh, so I think it was like in October or November when they told me that um, that we really want you to join uh, as a as a permanent member. Uh, and for me, I mean, that's what what I've been kind of like hoping for uh, the last couple of years because I I'm I've known that it might end up that way, kind of. So it's been kind of like something I've been hoping for, so to say. Um, or hoping for, but I mean, it's it's a cool band. I really love to start with. I I love all of the other guys. Like it's like brothers. <laughs> or it sounds cliche, but it, yeah, we, we're really close and we have a good uh, uh, kind of like uh, relation to to each other. And I've been knowing knowing them for long now, and we spend a lot of time together on tour and su such. And also, I've been like a huge uh, Soilwork fan since maybe. Early 2000. I mean, it's a it's a great band. I mean, the music is awesome. So, just to be able to to kind of like do that on on full time, so to say, it's 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 an honor. So, yeah, I was stoked. I was super happy. That was a long <laughs> long explanation, but uh, it's been kind of like growing for a long time, and it's, so. But of course, to also to see the announcement when it's actually out there for everyone, it, it's pretty huge in a way. I mean, it's a, it was fun, and uh, I'm I'm honored, and I hope I will do do the band um, justice, and and also like step into David's shoes as his replacement. So uh, yeah, I will do my best to to make everyone happy. I really think you are kind of the light and, and all of the darkness of the whole situation that happened with David and I'm really happy you're the permanent member I think you're the best fit possible and thank you, uh, thank you for also addressing um, all of the, the complexity of the emotions behind David's loss I deliberately didn't want to ask the question because I know it's quite a sensitive topic 
So I really yeah. appreciate that you 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 went into it. I know it's not easy. No, but... I mean it's it's uh, it's not easy, and I mean now it's it's been a couple of months. Uh, so you you process it, of course. I think you will always kind of like think about it, uh, and and it will feel strange. But I mean, I think it develops also into something something else. And for me, I mean, I wasn't. I hadn't known David and I was, it wasn't my closest friends, but friend, but we spent a lot of time together. He's been in my studio recording and we've been talking quite a lot uh, during when I, when I took the, when I replaced him as a session guy, we, we met a lot, uh, a couple of times and went through the songs. And I mean, he, he was a really cool guy and we really got along really well. And, and, um, Yes, I mean it, it. It's it's tough. I mean, when you and he was also young, which which kind of like or too young to to pass away. At least uh, I mean he wasn't super young. <laughs> we are all getting older. <laughs> uh, so I mean that is also really fucked up in a way, and also his, his um, children and everything. And there's so many things that are bad in it, but uh, still he he left um, a, a really nice legacy in in every way with, with his songwriting and, and the, the music he left. Uh, uh, everyone with like both Soil Work and Night Flight Orchestra and all the other stuff he's been doing. So, I mean, yes, uh, you can listen to that and remember him. So it's a good thing. Definitely. Yeah. Now, you said something um, interesting also now and also in the press release that you've, you've been uh, first and foremost a big soil work fan. So, what is it? What is it like playing with a band you're also a fan of? Yeah, well, I'm a fan of uh, a lot of music. I, I'm I'm a music fan, <laughs> so to say. But I mean, soil work has been. I mean, soil work um, is one of the leading Swedish bands, or or kind of like one of the leading bands, no matter if it's Sweden or not, for the melodic uh, death metal kind of style. And they always did something kind of like a little bit unique, uh, in in my uh, opinion, at least. Uh, and um, they always stood up uh, as a high quality and band songwriting wise, and also with Bjorn's uh, vocals, which is kind of like world class. With his, uh, he's like one of the best singers ever. With both his kind of like uh, growl and and also his clean vocals, he, I mean he's pretty complete singer in my opinion. Uh, so I mean I, I mean when, maybe when I f I first heard them was on the um, Natural Born Chaos album and then on Stabbing the Drama that one hit me quite hard. It was um, uh, it's really still one of my favorite albums ever, Stabbing the Drama. So I mean it's quite cool to play stabbing the drama and nerve and those songs we use, we play live so it's it's fun uh and also i actually applied for the band uh, in like 2008 or something when they were said when david got the spot i also uh, sent bjorn some uh, hey check out me <laughs> <laughs> but then david got the spot and um which was uh, good uh, because he done a lot of good things for the band uh, and I've been doing a lot of other things. So it's not like I've been sitting uh, around doing nothing. <laughs> so, so, but I mean, um, as you say, they, they, I'm a fan and, um, but I mean, it's, it's hard not to be a fan uh, of a band like this because it's, it's so good. Was there any song in particular? So, Actually, what I want to ask is, what was the process of learning the songs like? Was it challenging? Was there a song in particular that you felt was more challenging than the others? Uh, I, yeah, it's challenging challenging because uh, the Soilwork songs aren't super easy to play. Uh, none of them. I, I mean, some are easier than others, of course. But it, it was also... <laughs> I, I'm. I always been kind of a busy guy playing with uh, different bands and and having my studio. And besides that, I have a normal day job. So we were. I think I learned all the set for the for the tour we did in January and February of 2019. I started kind of like the day before Christmas, and then we had oh. we, we were going to meet like January second or something. 
So I had like a week or maybe two weeks to learn uh, 75 minutes uh, of music. And yeah, I was stressful, but I kind of like spent all the Christmas uh, holidays sitting in my studio, kind of like just... I had the I had the songs um, in my uh, in my studio set up, so I I just played along, kind of like solo. Yeah, I just learned it by ear, and then I also had a set, sit down with David. Uh, like when I had gone through all the songs, I went over to his place and we just checked the details if there was something I kind of like had missed or uh, or so. But I mean, um, I don't know if any song in particular was. Uh, all of them are challenging, so uh, I, I don't have a specific song that I remember was extra hard. But but uh, yeah, well, you have very to good. Like... That's why <laughs> it was easy <laughs> for you because you're so good. No, actually, it wasn't easy, but it, it was a lot of work, and uh, and um, and there are still songs that we are talking about uh, bringing up into the set, which which uh, are kind of like challenging uh, to play, actually. So it's gonna take some uh, some effort to just be able to play them good enough. So, uh, but I I will be working on it. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, your the second leg of your European tour is also uh, approaching, and uh, yeah. you have two concerts in Romania, one in Cluj and the other in Bucharest uh, on yeah. April eighteenth and nineteenth. Yeah. And I think in two thousand nineteen, when you when Swell Work performed in Romania, that was was supposed to be one of your first concerts with the band, or am I mistaken? Well. It was the first tour. We were out on tour with mm -hmm. uh, Amorphis. Exactly. Uh, but the tour, I think the tour started like January 11 or mm -hmm. something. Or I, I think I have uh, maybe uh, the dates here. It was. Yeah, January 11th, we started in Germany. And, and um, so we did, I don't know, I think like we did 30 or so shows, uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't remember which uh, which date was that. Was it Bucharest? Yeah, January twenty. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that so was it. So it was like the tenth show, so show or something. <laughs> yeah. So you're coming back now as a full time yeah. member. Do you have any sort of I don't know expectations, memories maybe regarding that tour or that concert in particular? I don't think you have any memories because there's many <laughs> concerts. It's four years and um, exactly and, and and many gray hairs since then. <laughs> uh, but now, but I'm, I remember it was a good show. I, I think it was a pretty pretty good crowd. If I don't, it, it's easy to mix shows together when you're on tour. Um, but what I remember is that those shows around in that area, Sofia and Budapest, we played uh, Bucharest. I think like all of that run was really good. Uh, I don't remember exactly that venue uh, right now. Uh, was that this kind of like amphitheater kind of thing we played? I think, or? I think so. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Arena Le Romane, but I might be wrong. Yeah, it was. And it, it, it was like an outdoor kind of uh, yeah. ish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, that was a good show. Uh, that was a really good show, and uh, I think uh, it will be good this time as well. Not sure if we play the same venue, though I haven't checked that out. No, but... you're playing um, a big club this time. It's called the uh, Quantic Club in Bucharest, and okay. it's a similar venue in uh, Cluj, I think. But they're they're nice venues, so yeah. and the public, the, pe the people love you, so I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I mean, I mean that that first tour with we did uh, that I was part of with the. Uh, Amorphous. I mean, that entire tour was just uh, so good. Uh, it was a great package uh, touring with them, and uh, there was a, a lot of people on all the shows. So, I mean, I just have good memories. Uh, I, I'm that kind of guy. I mean, being on tour, it's sometimes it's quite hard, and you kind of like, oh, I want to be home, or you get sick or whatever, and it's kind of like tough, and you have to play every day, even if you're sick or not. But then afterwards, for me, it's like, no, it was all fine. I don't remember anything bad. It was like only only good times. <laughs> so that's the way I work. And uh, we did like now on this tour we're on now, we, we did a leg, leg one. And then we've been home for three weeks or two and a half weeks. 
and then next week we start the leg two of the of the tour and the and the first leg uh, it was like 28 shows or something we did mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i mean all of us and kind of like cataclysm and all, all the people on the tour has been home during the pandemic and maybe we don't meet that much people and all of a sudden we were like 17 people on one bus so everyone started to get sick oh, and it yeah. was like uh, I, ha- I had fever well, and uh, kind of like feeling like shit and also in when we played in it was in uh, Barcelona in Spain. I got food poisoning, so I was kind of like puking, uh, puking, puking, puking. And then, like one minute before we're gonna hit stage, I was it was the last time I went to the toilet and puked quite a lot. And this intro started rolling. It was like, okay, let's do this. I just have to kind of like do it, and that was bad. <laughs> but man. still, I. Yeah, I had like this bucket on the stage if if I had to puke on stage. But oh, somehow man. I kind of like, I, I, I focused and I managed to do it without, um, um, yeah, m- embarrass myself too much. <laughs> man, that's brutal. I think many people don't know. I mean, I think they imagine that it can be quite hard, but they don't know how brutal life on the road can be, especially when you get sick. And yeah. you still have yeah. to get up on stage in front of all of those people and give it your best. Yeah. Props to you, man. I don't think I, I definitely couldn't have done it. I would have just cried myself to sleep with the bucket yeah. near my bed. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing being on, you know, this, uh, uh, the show must go on kind of, uh, attitude. And it's, that's kind of like true. I mean, what I, I cannot cancel the show. I'm there and there's a lot of people. It's like you just have to try. Of course, if I faint on stage and I can't do it, we have to stop, of course. But as long as I can stand up, uh, I have to do it. Uh, and also, to be honest, I couldn't stand up all the time because I had to sit down on the on the po- drum podium for, for kind of like some parts of the set. I just sat down and I played. And Björn, people thought I was uh, drunk or something. So Björn had to explain for the audience that, Simon is really, really, really sick, so uh, bear with us. <laughs> He's doing his best. But in the end, it was a good show, and I think I, I played really good because I, the only thing I, I was focused on was kind of like to manage to play the songs, and everything else just had to come second. Yeah, it was definitely uh, memorable for, from more points of view <laughs> than just one. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, of course, but... When I'm there, it's it's really hard, and I you just want to disappear. But now afterwards, it's kind of like yeah, it was. It's a fun memory, or it that's it's at least it's a memory that, and it's good that I actually pull through. And so I mean that that's the way it is. I mean I'm not the only one playing six. I mean th- that's what I meant. There was a lot of sickness. Hopefully we have a better immune uh, system now when we've been together and the second leg we will be healthy all the way i mean yeah i hope so i definitely hope so i'm keeping my fingers crossed for you guys that nothing hits this time around um but since you brought it up i'm not sure i'm saying the title correctly is it overgevenheden really close yeah it it is ever even ever even hidden ever given hidden okay i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna try (laughs) harder next time no 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 it was good Uh, it was one of the best uh, i heard (laughs) so i'm impressed nailed it (laughs) thanks yeah you really did Uh, it was really good so i I, it's correct but that's kind of like one of the challenges bjorn uh, has on the show it's it's telling the audience to can you pronounce it Oh, people yeah. uh, mo- most times they they try and and uh, a lot of them do it good not not all of them but uh, it's fun i i understand i understand the the challenge and also with the with the o with the two dots which is kind of like swedish very yeah. specific so it kind of like confuses people i guess <laughs> it it means abandonment right yeah it yeah. it means abandonment it's it's quite a strong word that has yeah. very deep implications and i think it's kind of rings truer in this day and age after everything the world has been through and what we're still going through unfortunately uh what were the last couple couple of years for you like as a musician and as a human being how did you navigate it 
Yeah, what can I say? I mean, it's 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 been tough for all of us. Uh, I mean, uh, the world has been upside down, as you know. Uh, and I mean, it's been quite hard. I mean, when the pandemic hit, uh, when it when it happened, I was on a European tour with my other band. I play also in a Swedish uh, heavy metal band called Wolf, which is more like traditional heavy metal. Mm. Kind of Judas, Judas Priest, uh, except uh, kind of style. Uh, awesome. So we were out doing a, a European tour with our friends in another Swedish band called Grand Magus, uh, and we did. We were supposed to do like seventeen or twenty shows, and we did. Like we started in the UK, uh, where we played. I think we started like March five or something, or March three in in twenty twenty. And we did like eight shows in in UK and Ireland and and um, Scotland, and then on the our new album was released uh, March 13, 2020 with Wolf, and that was the same day when all of Europe closed. It was like n- nothing more happens, and then we played like the last show on March fifteen in London, and after that it, it we couldn't we had to fly home and. On top of that, all of the touring tour uh, personnel, including all band members, also got COVID. Oh, so man. when I got home, I got sick. So I was, I got really sick. So I was gone for seven weeks. So, um, like four weeks where, where I couldn't kind of like talk to me, I was like totally out. And then like another three weeks when I before I actually could go back to a, like a normal job or something. So it, it was, that was a, a bad start. <laughs> to say the but, least, yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of fucked up. And I mean, there were a lot of people having it a lot worse than me, of course, passing like who died of, of it. I, I wasn't dying, but I I was feeling really bad. And then I, I mentioned I have this uh, studio, uh, like a music studio here mm-hmm. in Stockholm. So what I I lost a couple of bookings. I was supposed to record a couple of albums that people were like afraid what, what was going to happen. But then after a while, the studio business picked up at least. So what what a lot of bands started to do was to record material and kind of like using the time to to do a lot of of that stuff. So I I had a pretty much work anyway. Uh, not with playing live shows, but with, with the studio. So, so that was good. And and in Sweden also, we we, we deal a little bit differently with with the pandemic than a lot of different countries around the world. So we the, the Sweden wasn't really close uh, closed down. It was still like operating kind of normally. So you could go to work and you could go out like on restaurants and stuff like that. But they, clo- what happened was that they, they closed earlier in the evening. So they didn't keep like the bars open and stuff like that, but still uh, everything was kind of like normal in a way. Running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was tough and I, I and you still like today, the, the, the reality being uh, in a band today, it's quite hard because um, when everything opened up again, all of the bands have been recording albums and been sitting at home for like two years or something. Everyone wants to tour at the same time. So now we have that problem instead that there are kind of like a lot of tours happening at the same time, which make people have to decide that because they cannot afford to go to all the shows. So you have to kind of like compete for the audience in a different way because everyone is out there at the same time and also a lot of people i think are still afraid of canceling that that tour is getting canceled which make people wait in until the last minute to buy tickets which make the tours kind of like the promoters getting scared and they kind of like that's why some tours get canceled as well because they don't think there will be any audience and they cannot afford it so it it, it has it has made uh, the the life as a touring band quite hard, uh, and also everything is so much more expensive now <laughs> because yeah. of the pandemic and also like the the situation in Ukraine. Uh, 
which made the like gasoline prices, bus prices, everything is like, I don't know how much, but a lot, lot more expensive. So it's really hard to get um, the tours uh, to go break even. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's a tough situation, but still, I, I think like a band like Soilwork are pretty uh, fortunate to still have a kind of like pretty high um, position and still being able to do tours and uh, kind of like get decent bookings and stuff like that. So, but but it, it's really hard. So, uh, Thank you so much hope. for sharing that yeah. also. Not many musicians are open to, to talk about the increase, how it more competitive everything is ever since yeah. the market opened up again. And everybody, as you said, is touring. There's a lot of events. A lot of people are trying to make a decision what concert to go to, what concert yeah. not to go to. And it's yeah. something that hasn't really been spoken about. So I think it's it's awesome yeah. of you to point that out. And it's it's definitely yeah. an inside perspective that is worth taking. Yeah. And also the fact that people are waiting, even if you decide, yeah, I'm going to see Soywork, of course, but they don't buy tickets, which make every promoter kind of like, oh, are we going to sell any tickets or what, what is happening? And and then they start to contact us. So, okay, blah, blah, blah. And everything is a little bit shaky. Uh, but I mean, so far on, on this tour, there's been a really good turn up. So, I mean, it, it hasn't been a problem while uh, being on the shows. So, but it's still, it, it's, it's of course stressful because you never know, uh, but it's been good. So, uh, and also, what I was going to say that there's a situation with, of course, a lot of the venues has been losing money because they haven't been able to have bands playing there because uh, so they have been kind of like losing a lot of money and and you notice that because all of a sudden a lot of the venues are taking concession. If if we sell merch there, they take a lot of percentage just oh, really? for us to sell the merch there. They want us to give them twenty five percent of our income and merch is kind of like what you live on. That is kind of like the one of the big incomes on the tour. The the fees for the shows kind of like pays everything, and then our salary comes pretty much from the merchandise. And then all of a sudden, the venues are taking like a really big cut for us to sell it, which makes it even harder. But it sounds like I'm complaining a lot now. No, you're <laughs> not. No, no, no. It's it's awesome that you're talking about it because I don't think there's enough talk and. Many musicians kind of, you know, steer clear of actually addressing the the real issues because ever since the streaming services broke out, nobody's been making money anymore in the real sense of the word, except when they're yeah. they're touring and selling merchandise. Yeah. And the fact and that now they take that <laughs> are taking a share of that as well is kind of leaving a lot of bands with you know, asking themselves, what the hell am I going to do at the end of the day? Can I still yeah, is it worth it? Yeah. to be a musician? Yeah. yeah, it's tough. And I, I've seen a lot of, not a lot, but it's starting to get uh, noticed. And I've seen some people, uh, some bands addressing this problem now lately in the press. So hopefully it can turn into something that uh, the venues understand that the they can't take everything. We need to get something or else we can't yeah. do. Or else yeah. they're not going to have any bands playing because no, nobody's that's... going to be making music anymore because it's going to be yeah. too expensive. Yeah, that's the risk. I mean, uh, people maybe stop touring, uh, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe, hopefully, this is like an something that will go away by itself. Where Hopefully, the world is coming back to some sort of normal someday and uh, maybe this will get solved by itself but uh, you don't know uh, hopefully so, so i hope so as well definitely yeah. uh since yeah. we're kind of uh, drawing to a close here with uh, the time oh yeah no uh, stress for me it's okay <laughs> I uh, I just wanted to ask you one last question before uh, we call it quits, so to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, my favorite song off of Over Given Hetten is definitely the title track. 
I also yeah. saw the video and I think it's it's beautiful. That yeah. story about loss is wow, it's it's so well done and so yeah. nicely put into into image. I really love yeah. it and I must admit I cried <laughs> watching the video. <laughs> it's so touching. Oh. And the song itself is is really is really touching. And I just yeah. wanted to ask you if there's one particular song off of this record that you love playing live and you can't wait yeah. to play when yeah. you're gonna be there on stage in Bucharest and in Cluj. Yeah, well, I, I love Ever Even Hit and as well. It's a really, really good song and it's fun to play. But I think my favorite track of the album is uh, Is It In Your Darkness. Uh, I really lo love that one. And and when I heard it the first time, I told Bjorn, the, and, and when we were kind of like thinking about what songs to play live, I said, uh, is it in your darkness? We have to play it, please, please, please. And um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a, it's a really good. I mean, it's, I think that's my favorite of the album, in both uh, to hear and to play. So, yeah. Thank it's you good. so much for everything, Simon. It's been a really cool discussion. I hope we, yeah. we get the chance to do this again sometime soon. And yeah. hopefully I can you... see you. Yeah, you will come to the show or? Yeah, hopefully I can make it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's in my plans. I, I really want to come yeah. and see you guys. Yeah, well, we can sort out uh, some interview or something if you want to back there or whatever, if, if you're in need uh, or want to, I mean. Uh, Definitely, so. that would be awesome. So it's just, just let us know. So Of course. It will be fun. I'm looking forward. And now I'm quite eager to get out on the road again. It's been like... Of course, it's nice to get back home and just relax a bit. Uh, but now it feels like, come on, let's start. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I'm sure the audience is going to love you guys because the people here in Romania have been are really looking forward to the shows. And uh, they're yeah. usually a nice audience. And yeah, it's going to be. I'm cool. sure. Yeah, it's always been uh, in the past. So I'm pretty sure it will be the same now. Thank you so much once again. And Thank see you, you on, in April. Yeah, see you then. Take care. Good luck. Have, you too. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.